Hi, I am Shannon with Pick and Booth Vintage down in sunny Southwest Florida, and I want to thank you for joining me today. So today what we're going to do is we are going to look in depth at the paint and lace. I have a couple tips and tricks that I have found that work the best for me, and I'm going to share them with you today. And we're going to do from start to finish a complete application of the paint and lay. We're going to seal it, paint it. We're going to do everything. So make sure you watch the end so you can see the entire process and some tips and tricks that I'm going to include along the way. All right. So most of you know that the new release for um, spring release had um, a few paint and lays. There was the Summer Villa and then there was the Melange. Well, the Melange is one is perfect for if you're a beginner because they're bite-sized pieces that you can play with. Um, there is not a repeating pattern. You can pick what you want, what you don't want to use, and you can try. So I've been using this inlay to try different techniques, what works, what doesn't work, what mm, may work. So um, that is what we're going to do today. I'm going to share my knowledge of all the things that I've been testing with you. All right, so here in front of me, I have one of these big charcuterie boards. It's already been sealed and painted, and I sell them like this, but I thought, wow, you know, it'd be kind of fun to put a paint inlay on here. This rooster, I just love him. Look at all the details. This paint inlay is just amazing. I was gonna put it on a door, and that's what I was gonna do today, but I thought it'd be really hard and awkward to try to show this to you on a door. Plus, I wanted to be able to show you from start to finish, so I have another board here ready to go with a different part of the inlay on there. I, um, I think it's very important that you get to see the whole process rather than just chunks of it. Um, you can't make this food safe. Uh, what my suggestion would be to you is to use those cute doilies, put them on top, or use it as display. I know I said shikuri board, but it could be more of like a table display. If you wanted it to be food safe, you'd have to use hemp oil, which we're not covering that today. But um, my suggestion is put the decal off to the side a little bit maybe have one of those doilies here and then you can put your food here or you can just put your serving trays on top but this is more for decor all right so I'm going to apply this with a clear coat because I like the look of the wood and I like the look of the white paint here it's already done ready for me to go so if you have a surface that you already like and you don't want to change the color use a clear coat when I say clear coat, it could be varnish, it could be poly, whatever you use. I happen to use a clear coat and I'm using a flat. I'm going to go ahead and apply some clear coat. Now I have a little tip for you. There we go. We'll do this one first. Okay, so if you want a cleaner impression, you want it to be as um, clean, but the most paint coming off your paint inlay, you need to apply more product, whether it's more paint, more clear coat, you need to be a little bit heavy with it. All right, so that's what I'm doing here. I want to get a nice impression. So what I'm doing is I'm putting enough on here. If you notice, I did one whole coat and I went back and I put another coat because you want to put enough on. Um, it's better to go a little bit more than a little bit less if you want a good impression. And then I'm going to come back and I'm just going to even it out just a little bit because if you have pockets or pools of your clear coat or paint, that is when you get the little wrinkles in your paper. And if you don't care about that, it's okay. Then go ahead and do it. These are not meant to be perfect, perfect. But if you do it this way, you're going to get um, a cleaner impression. Now, if you want, I'm going to put this one up there. If you want more of a distressed application, then you're going to want to use a little bit less product, a little bit, when I say product, I mean paint or clear coat, whatever you are using to put your paint inlay on. All right. You'll notice that the paint inlay, the paper becomes clear. It's because of the clear coat on the other side is a, uh, joining with the paint inlay and it's the paint inlay itself is going into the clear coat. So when it dries, it'll leave an impression. It's like, I know you heard this saying before, like a furniture tattoo. Um, it's gonna leave an impression. So what I'm doing now, I spritzed it with a little bit of water. You don't wanna go too heavy on the water. Not too much. 
and I'm giving it a nice firm press because I'm trying to make sure that my paint inlay is pressed in to my clear coat. Now, here is another important tip. When you are letting this dry, uh, you want to make sure that it is fully dry. You don't want to wait till it's, you know, you don't want to wait a week to take it off. You should take it off in about a good hour or so. Um, if you leave it on too long, you could have a little bit some problems taking it off. So especially with clear coat, just make sure you give it enough time to thoroughly dry and then remove it. One time I did a project with the roast chintz and I left it on for hmm, about a week and a half, maybe two weeks. I forget why, um, but I came back to it and I had a really hard time taking it off. So, and that was with paint. Now, again, I just want to recap. You can put your paint inlay on with a clear coat. This is a water-based clear coat. And you want to put a thicker coat on, that way you get a better impression. If you want a more distressed look, you put on thinner. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to stick this to the side and we're going to let this one dry. I do have one that's ready to go, same type of board, and um, an inlay from the Melange paint inlays, and you'll notice it's dry. I put it on at 11 o'clock, so it's been drying for about an hour and 10 minutes now. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is you're, we're going to spritz it with water, and then we're going to let the water sit on the paper just to make sure that the paper will pull away from the surface without tearing. So you always want to make sure you let the water sit long enough. If you start pulling your paper back, you're going to notice that it might not be thoroughly wet and it might not release. So just spritz it with a little bit more water and then it will release. We're going to go ahead and just wait for a minute. Now I want to show you this was super fun to do. Let me bring it up. Um, you'll notice, see the deep cracks in there? This is, uh, it's called a cracking paste. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to see if I could put an inlay over the crackles and um, you can see inside the crackles, it did work. So I put it on over the crackles and then I used some dark wax to uh, form around it just to give it that antique look. So this, is, this was fun to do. You can do a lot with these paint inlays, especially when you're using the clear coat. Now, I want to show you this. This is what was very interesting to me. And I stumbled upon this. Um, if you follow, you know, um, IOD, then you may have seen the door that I did. It was with the Chateau inlay uh, on an old door with antiquing. Well, when I did the door, I did, I put the, the uh, Chateau paint inlay on and I didn't seal it right away because I, I got sidetracked. I'm always working on like 10 different things at the same time. And it was so beautiful. I didn't want to ruin it because I knew when I did this, that they were fairly new and I didn't want to smear it. So time went by and then all of a sudden I was like, oh, I want to put some fine line crackle on this and make it look antique. So I started brushing on and after I got halfway down my door, I was like, oh my goodness, I forgot to seal it with the 50% clear coat, the 50% water. I didn't do it right. But then I was like, wait a minute, it's not smearing. What is going on here? So. I realized that there's something you can use that you can brush right on and it didn't have any problems. And I have um, an example right here. I just recently did a YouTube on this. If you notice on the right side of the heart, it's all smeared. And the left side of the heart is not smeared. And this is when I brushed on water-based clear coat. And then this is when I brushed on a solvent-based one. It didn't smear. So, I'm thinking that anything oil-based, when you put it on, it's not going to smear. So, of course, I had to test it. Let me show you this board. I got another board here because I love to play. It's going to be upside down, but you'll get the gist of it. So, I love the look of the black on wood. The black paint and light is just gorgeous. And I, um, So, I put it on with clear coat. And I put this one on with clear coat, too. Just normal water-based clear coat. Then I came back with a varnish, a solid varnish. I tested, I wanted to test it again. I just wanted to make sure. So this was my, I don't know how many tests I did, but this is a test, it actually worked. So this is the varnish, it did not smear. Now I was like, ooh. So this varnish, this solvent-based varnish works. 
I wonder if a oil-based wax will work and not smear it. So right here, there's a little bit, you can see it's shiny right here. You can still, there's a little bit <laughs> oil-based left, but I put the oil base on here too, and that did not smear my inlay either. So that to me was like, so there are set, there are a couple different ways you can seal your inlay. And then I have the steps for sealing with a water-based product. And we're going to go over that in a minute. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and start with this one. We're going to release this. So I just have my handy dandy sprayer. And I'm going to give it a good mist of water because I want that paper to release from the backing and I want my paint inlay to stay on here. So I'm just going to kind of just get any excess water off and we're gonna let this sit here for a minute. And do it once more. I've done these inlays several, several times. Okay, so why that's doing that real quick, I just want to sh um, debunk a little myth that I've been hearing. Um, if you've experienced this and um, you have some different information, please comment below. Let me know what product you use because I use clear coat all the time. So I was asked, can you put on the paint inlay again using clear coat when you used it the first time with clear coat? And I kept hearing, no, you can't, no, you can't. So I was like, mm, I don't know why you wouldn't. So I went ahead and tested it. So here is the B. Um, I did a bee gallery with clear coat and I put them in these little frames and I used the same bee with clear coat and I put it on so yes, it does work. You can use clear coat and get a second impression even though you used it the first time with the clear coat. Um, there were some people saying it doesn't work. It might not work with certain products, but it does with the product that I use. So, all right, I think this has been sitting long enough. Let's go ahead and let's take off and reveal all right so i'm going to use a little bit more water it's sticking just a bit i want to make sure it comes off perfect this was put on with a water-based clear coat so i decided you know what i wanted to try will it go on with a solvent or solvent based varnish so i tried this one guess what it did not work so that does not work all right, let's go ahead and try from this corner. There we go, look. Now you don't have to pull this really fast. You can go slow. Remember, it's not a Band-Aid, so take your time, enjoy the process. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Now I wanna, I'm gonna leave it here just for a second because I wanna point out, do you see these lines? See that line right here? There's a couple of them throughout my design. This is because there was a pool of too much clear coat. That will happen also with paint. So what it does is it has nowhere to go. So it pulls up and creates a little wrinkle. And then you're left with these little lines. For me, it doesn't bother me at all. I think it's, I think it's fine, but some people might not like it. So you tr that's why it's suggested that you put on your, whatever you're using as even as possible. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take the rest off and you can see there are a few other ones. If they really bother you, you can touch it up with a paintbrush. There we go. Look how beautiful that is. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lay this flat, this part right here. I wanna lay this flat because I wanna be able to reuse this. I'm gonna allow that to dry and then I can use it for another time. I'll just put it back in my pack. I saved those papers in between the paint and inlay so it doesn't have any problems with um, sticking to anything else. So while this is drying, I'm gonna tell you to how to seal it with a water base just because a lot of you use the water base. So I want to, I'm gonna put my little, my little thing up here. So if you're gonna use a water base sealant, first thing you need to do, you need to spritz it with like one of these, like a little spray bottle. Use 50% water, 50% your uh, water-based clear coat. You can give it a fine mist. What that's gonna do is it's gonna set your inlay. It sets it, it creates a, a protective layer without brushing. So you're just spraying it on. Once that's dried, then you can go back and you can brush your water-based poly on. 
um, or your wax, whatever you want to use. So that is how you do it with a water base. Now with the oil based, let me take this one off. All you need to do is simply let this dry and then you can brush your solvent, solvent, varnish, poly, whatever on. I also used uh, oil-based wax and that did not smear either. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna dry this real quick because I wanna show you, I, you guys need to see this. You'll basically know that your inlay, your inlay is dry when it, it's gray. I just absolutely love the look of the paint inlay, the black on the natural wood color. It's so pretty. Well, not natural wood, but the steam wood. Almost dry. Generally, I'm not one to rush the process. I like to let everything dry on its own. But for time's sake, I need you guys to see this. Um, if you have tried to do a second impression of an inline with a clear coat, please comment the brand that you use because I, I want to try it. And I need to know the information because um, everything that I have used with the clear coat has worked water based wise so I just want to know what doesn't so when people come and ask me because not everybody uses the same type of paint that I use so I want to make sure that I have as much knowledge as possible all right it's almost dry if you are working on your inlays or if you know somebody else who's working on them and you want to share this video with them please share all right so this is for the most part dry now we're going to use I'm going to be using a matte varnish solvent not water base. Now I've tried this several times, so I'm 99.9% .9 sure it's gonna work again. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna start over here on this little flower. Look, not smearing. <clears throat> However, um, solvent based products are quite stinky. So make sure you're in a well ventilated area or have a fan blowing. I had a fan going, but it. It was, um, it was making noise in the background, so I shut it off. And you can see that I'm just slopping it on, I'm pushing hard, and this inlay is not smearing. You'll notice as I'm putting it on, it brings the color back to life. Like, see how this is a little gray here? Now watch when I put the solvent on it. It brings out the depth of the black. Now this is a matte varnish, um, so it should dry without any ring around what I just did, <clears throat> but I'm going to go back. I'm just not going to do it right now because it's very um, pungent and uh, I'm getting a headache already. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to finish the rest of the edges with it. But this is just to show you that there are other ways to seal than having to take the 50-50 water and water-based poly. So I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover today. I think the, the main part that I really wanted to cover today was the sealing part. The sealing part can be very tricky, so you definitely need to know your products. Is it water-based? Is it solvent-based or oil-based? Um, has something to do with the chemicals. Um, I don't really know much about the difference of chemicals or whatever. I just know that what works and what doesn't work. <laughs> um, I'm a maker, a creator, and I love to do this kind of thing. A couple other tips that I would like to share with you with the inlays. When you're using a bigger inlay, lay, let's say like the Chateau or the Summer Villa, which the Summer Villa is amazing, um, the pages all come with a little bit of a edge. So make sure you cut your edges off first and always, always, always lay out your design on your project first. Make sure it fits the way you want to. Center it and then cut the edges off as you need. But always go in with the plan. To be successful, you should always have a plan. Um, even though so, I know plans change, but you should always know how you're going to tackle it. And one final thing that I can suggest also is when you're working with the paint inlays, if it, especially if it's on a big piece, if you can lay it down, it makes a tremendous difference. If you can lay down what you're working on, because it's just, it's just easier to use, to work with than to try it standing up because sometimes it can drip, it can slip. So if you can lay it down, lay it down. All right, you guys, you have a fabulous day. And I want to say thank you for joining me as always. Have a great day, guys.